Right, so today's video is all about short game. I asked for your input, I'm answering your questions on the short game, and I'm gonna help you get the most out of the wedges in your bag. Right, Ryan Dawson, 46. More spin from 20 to 50 yard short game. Now, there was a lot of questions on this, um, you know, requesting how you get more spin on these shots. And it's a difficult shot because unfortunately, the reality is that many of us don't plan golf courses that are conducive to spin. But let's say you have got a golf course which allows it, you've got the equipment, you know, the quality ball and the wedge. The first thing would be 60 degree in my hand. Anything more than 60 isn't gonna be the best to spin it. So make sure you don't go 64, 62. And then really it's to do with making sure the strike is good and actually having a pretty low ball flight. The lower the ball flight means that there was generally more grab between the club and the ball, and it kind of heads out low with a lot of spin. You watch these great players, the shots that they spin go super low. So even though we've got 60, theoretically it should be quite low. So I'm gonna go ball is directly under the middle of me, narrow stance, a little bit of weight left, and then I'm really gonna make sure that I return the golf club to this vertical position. No shuffling, definitely not shuffling. That's just going to de-loft it. And then I want to feel like the grip of the club stays pretty close to me on the way through. You can see how the grip is pretty close, but I've not done that because I've bent my arms. I've just not kept the grip moving in this direction. I've let the club head kind of overtake and I've got a little bit of right hand throw. So if we can do that, we should be able to hit the low spinner. So even though I've got 60, this should be a pretty low ball flight with any luck and have some grab. Okay, not a bad result, but probably not as good as I would have hoped. Definitely came out a little higher than I wanted. So let's go again. Let's see if we can get that ball coming in a little lower. So again, that result wouldn't be too bad, but probably didn't have as much spin as I wanted. Again, that one just popped up a little bit. So let me just go one more. Difficult shot to hit this one, because if you don't get the right strike, it can be really difficult to get the result. Better. Okay, and I've carried that a little bit too far, but it's actually grabbed a little bit quicker, and it's rolled a couple of feet past. You can see that ball flight was much lower, and that was because I struck that much better, it had the right amount of spin. So if you can get it right, it will go in lower, but it should grab. But just make sure the setup's right, and just make sure you're working on that release Okay, Akash VX, can you show the differences in setups between your chips and your flop shots, for example? Great question, and when you're looking to hit different types of shots around the greens, setup is, is everything. Because how we stand the ball will dictate pretty much what we're trying to do. So I've got my 52 degree wedge here. If I was hitting a little chip and run, I'm going to go ball sort of back of me, so you can see that my buttons are in front of that golf ball, so ball is back which puts the hand a little bit forwards. I have my heels probably the width of a club head apart, so pretty close. And I'm probably gonna stand a little closer to the golf ball. I'm gonna walk in, I'm gonna have the hand a little bit higher. And all of those things mean that my 52 degree actually comes out on a pretty low ball flight. That's gonna go way too far, I think. Yeah, a little bit too strong, but you can see that super low ball flight. Now, if I then switch to a 60 and I wanted to hit a flop shot, yeah, the 60 degree on its own is gonna go higher, but how I stand the ball is gonna basically be everything. So the first thing I would do is I'd stand much further away from it. I would open the face and I would have a much wider stance. Now, the reason I'm doing all those things is I want the grip to be closer to the ground. You know, the closer we stand like this, the grip gets higher. The further away we stand and the wider we stand, the grip gets lower. The reason we do that is because when the grip gets lower, it promotes a more rounded swing and we're able to slide the club under the ball much more. I'm also going to have the ball further forward in my stance, so certainly not back. And yeah, there's definitely going to be some technique changes, but even just the setup, you know, should look very different. And one of the things I always say to my students is, before you've taken the club away, I should be able to pretty much guess or tell what type of shot you're hitting based on the way you set yourself up. So for the lob shot, and this is not going to be uh, an easy shot to hit from this situation, especially not with that flag where it is, but that will be my lob shot. Further away, wider stance, lower grip. And I was able to hit it. That's definitely not the shot that I would use from there, but the setup changes there made that shot you know, possible versus how I'd set myself up with a chip. 
Right, so we're in the bunker and J. Edward Schwartz wants to know why he hits the ball frequently on greenside bunker shots. So I'm guessing what Jay's talking about there is that on greenside bunker shots, he's hitting the ball uh, not enough of the sand and the ball's clearly going to shoot way across the green there. So there's a couple of things I would be looking to do. Number one is, first of all, you have to get your feet set in. It gives you a little bit more of a solid base, but actually gets you lower. You imagine your, your circle you swing the club around your body on, as you dig your feet in, that circle just gets lower and you're more likely to hit the ground. Okay, the second thing is ball position. I want that ball position forward because my club is gonna land pretty much middle of me. So I need the middle of me to be, to be behind the golf ball. So that would be the second thing. And then the third thing, in greenside bunker shots, we tend to wanna keep this lead knee pretty flexed. You know, as soon as we start to straighten that knee, it's gonna kind of push you upwards. So if I hit a little flop out onto this green, that lead knee should stay pretty much kind of flexed as I hit that shot. And that allows me to take that sand and it allows me to make sure I'm hitting the sand before the ball. The final thing I would say is just look at the sand. Um, you know, really quite common to see a golfer's eyes got a dart back to the ball and then the brain kind of follows that and we hit the golf ball. So look at the sand, set your feet in, ball position, keep that knee flexed, you should be fine. Right, Jardine Casson, I've got the yips when chipping any advice. I feel your pain. Um, I, I've been there, I'm sort of there a little bit at the moment. Maybe not quite the yips, but my, my chipping at the moment isn't great and uh, yeah, get me on the course, I've got some definitely some thoughts in my mind just from trying to avoid. So generally, you know, if you've got the yips, it probably starts technically, you know, in that you make some poor movements, you get some poor results, then it starts to get into your head and you're on the course and it's just terrible. So I'm gonna go through what I would suggest you do on the course, as opposed to actually looking at your technique because technique will be quite individual to you. On the course, do not let that stay still. Okay, and do not spend too long over the ball. That would be my advice. So think externally, and keep the club moving. So, you know, for me, I, I, like I said, I'm probably struggling a little bit in my short game, and when I'm struggling on the course, I find myself over the ball, looking at the ball, and the club is too static. And that's when I start to get the, the tension, the thoughts creep in, the, the worry about thinning or fatting it. You look at the great players, what they'll do is they'll take some practice swings, but they're looking at the target. You know, they're always externally focused. They're thinking about the ball flight that they're trying to hit. And if you look at the club head, the club head is never still. And then when I'm ready to hit it, I'm just going to go in, club goes down, a couple of little waggles with the club, another look at the hole, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit it. And that's not a bad result, it's going to break a little bit around to the left. But keeping a bit of flow in the golf club tends to keep the tension out. Keeping externally focused, i.e. what you're trying to do, means that you're not going to be worrying about the technique too much and thinking about going outside, inside and not thinning it, not fatting it. But it's difficult, you know, it takes one or two shots to completely shatter your confidence and it can take five to 10 rounds to start to see that confidence going up a little bit. So that's my advice, keep the club head moving, get focused more on the target rather than being sort of locked over the ball, staring at the ball too long, static in the club isn't gonna help. So externally focused, keep the club moving, you should be able to hit some better shots. Right, Scott Hodson, 26, how to hit a high bunker shot. Now, probably don't actually need that shot here, but we'll go through it. So the first thing I would do is grab the most loft. For me, that's 60. So a lot of my bunker shots are played with a 56. If I need more height, I'm gonna grab more loft, so 60 it is. Then what I do is I crank that face open, like super open. I wanna feel like I can balance the sand on the club face. That's how open I want it. And the grooves or the club face is looking straight up to the sky. That's really gonna help. And then really, it's about trying to stand further from the ball and getting the hands lower. Similar to what we said in that setup for that lob shot. The further you can stand from the ball and the lower you can get your hands, the more likely it is that the club is gonna work around your body on this flatter shape. And that's really conducive to height. Feet get set in as normal. And now we can start thinking about what we do through the ball. My focus when I'm trying to get a high bunker shot is to really slow the grip down almost have the grip moving backwards as the club accelerates past it super quick. And you can see as I rehearse that, I pull the grip almost you know, backwards. The butt of the club is now kind of middle of me, where at this point it was kind of over the ball. So it's really this kind of excessive throw with the right hand, trying to keep the loft on the club and point it back towards you. Okay, so let's have a go. All those things do make this shot a little bit more difficult to execute but face super open. Let's see if we can slide that club under the ball. 
too much sand. The result was okay, but I hit too much sand there, which is why it didn't go as high as I would have wanted. So let's have another go. So I say, result was okay, but probably not the flight we wanted. Yeah, it's okay. Probably would have liked a little bit more height there, but it's not an easy shot. And that would get me out of most bunkers, you know, even the ones where the lip is super high, that should work. So just follow those points. You've got to be committed because the higher it goes, the shorter it goes. You need more speed to get it to go the distance that you need. Right, KRAN330 says, should you get special wedges or are the wedges that are in the set okay? Um, good question and not an easy answer. I would personally say, Specialist wedges are great because they are designed to be used around the green and there's so many more design features. But if you're a complete beginner, then the wedges that are in your set are probably okay, but it won't take you long until you get to that point where there's gonna be some benefits to the wedges. So I carry the 60, which is the high toe. I carry the 56 and the 52, which are in the milled grind three. And you know, basically you look at it compared to my other clubs, they're completely different design in terms of the sole, where the weight distribution is and how they interact with the ground. And that's really important because when you start to get around the greens and you're in different lies, you know, fairway, thick, rough, and especially bunker, how the club interacts with the ground or the sand is, is kind of key to that shot. So my advice would be, as kind of soon as you can, get into some specialist wedges because they're just gonna help you hit a lot of different type of shots around the greens and ultimately help you get a little bit closer to the flag. Right, Robinvich wants to know, do you hit wet compact bunkers like hard pan. Now, whenever I ask for suggestions on content around short game, there's always loads of questions on wet compact sand. They're difficult, you know, and many of you will be faced with that the course that you play with. This hand here actually is not wet, and it's not compact, but we can still go through the theory. So I'm gonna be using the most loft I carry, 60, I'll explain why, um, because I don't want to be opening the club too much and exposing the bounce. Bounce is great when we've got fluffy sand. When we've got wet compact sand, we don't need to do that. So if I'm not opening the face, I'm not increasing loft. That's why I choose the most loft that I've got in my hands. So I'm gonna use 60. And I'm still gonna try and you know, put my feet in, even though that might not be, I might not be able to go quite as far. And I'm gonna have a little bit of shaft lean, tiny bit, not a huge amount. And I'm gonna play this with a pretty square face. And what that means is I'm starting to push that leading edge a little bit more down towards the ground, which is kind of the opposite to what we normally do. And then because of those setup changes, I'm gonna have a slightly steeper approach, which again is kind of good when the, west, the sand is compact. I'm gonna get a much lower ball flight and it's gonna have more roll. So I'll try and play one from here, even though this isn't sort of wet and compact, but you can see that little bit of shaft lean, weight is on the lead side, face is square, a little bit steeper into the ball, and we get that lower ball flight, but it's got a lot more roll out. So if you look at that flight compared to the higher shot, vastly different even though that was the same golf club. So you've got to hit a little closer to the ball because there's not as much give in the sand. But if you can just move that contact point closer and do those setup points, you should be able to hit that shot. It's just really hard to hit high soft shots when the sand is compact. So sometimes, you know, you just have to accept that you might be rolling 10 to 15 feet past and just really grind and try and make that one coming back. Right, Nathan Hinchcliffe, 2000, wants to know how to hit a 50 yard pitch or chip shot. Um, Great question, these are often difficult for a lot of golfers. First thing I do, always, always laser it. So I use the Golf Buddy L10V, that is 49 yards, that flag. But the more you can start to laser it, the better, because you're gonna to start to get your distances dialed in. Very often I don't see golfers using lasers when they get closer in, but I think you need to know exactly how far it is. So the key thing with a 50 yard shot, direction's probably not gonna be as big of an issue easier to control direction. What is a bigger issue is distance control and trajectory control. If the ball goes too high or too low, it will go too far or too short. And if you hit it too far or too short, it's gonna be obviously not as close as you want it. So the first thing I would do is I'd be looking at getting the ball pretty close to the middle of my heels. I'd be getting my heels much closer together. And the key thing when hitting these shots is that your the sequence of events is closely more knitted together. What I mean by that is a full swing, we would generally have this separation between the lower then the torso, then the arms, then the club. On a pitch shot, all of those things tend to work, or should work a little bit more in sync. There is still some separation, the sequencing is still the same, but there's not much of a stretch. So what I'd love you to do in your practice swings is feel like your hands, the chest, and the hips 
are all sort of rotating back and through at the same sort of rate and the same pace. That's not necessarily what's happening, but it's a good feel for these shots. And I also want you to feel like you're not overly using the wrists. I'm not trying to create as much angle as I can here. I'm, yes, I'm using a little bit of wrist set, but I'm trying to feel the clubs a little bit wider. That helps me with my interaction with the ground. So, nice and wide, body, arms and club all matched. Interaction with the ground is good. And then it's a case of just working on your distance control, which is something you probably have to do a little bit in practice to know how far to hit it from each distance. That's come out a little left. So not great. The flight was what I wanted. That nice low flight that had a bit of spin just came out a little bit left, but the distance was perfect. Let's try that again. So we can get a little closer. Body, arms and club all matched. Low ball flight. Got a little bit left. That's not too bad. But similar to what we said with the chipping at the start, the more you can strike it, the lower they're going to come in. So you can see that ball flight there, super low. Yeah, I've hit those left, I need to work on my alignment. Nice low ball flight, low to a spin, that's the way to hit them. But everything's got to be matched, everything's got to be working in sync. That's how you hit those 50 yard pitch shots. Right, Billy Bird 26 wants to know how many wedges should I have in my bag and what lofts for a 20 plus handicap trying to improve? So, pitching wedge, that's going to be the starting point. Okay, whatever the loft is on that will dictate what you do from then on. You know, we know there's different clubs on the market now, all have different types of loft. If your pitching wedge is, let's say, 48 degrees and someone else's is 44 degrees, you're going to have very different wedges. I go pitching wedge and then I carry 52, 56 and 60. Now, the reason I carry those is I've got no more than about four degrees between each of my wedges. So my pitching wedge is about 40, well, it's 47. So I've got five degrees, four degrees, four degrees. Anything more than about five degrees gap, and you're probably gonna find you've got distance gaps in your bag. So I would say, work out what your pitching wedge is, and then go five degrees from there, five degrees from there, five degrees from there. That's gonna give you a pretty good idea about what lofts you should have in your bag. If you get those sorted, it's definitely gonna help you and help you start to drop that handicap, because your short game will be a lot more dialed in.